In order to channel us, Kathy is having to connect with a species that lives in group mind all the time. And as she tunes into us, her consciousness is going around the whole earth and beyond it. Reaching into the deep recesses of the insect kingdom. Isolating out our particular chirp, you might say. Actually, the ones she's talking to um, are not from Earth. Uh, but we want to connect her to all the praying mantises on the Earth at this time in order for her to get our vibration. We are call ourselves the Mira. We are higher dimensional beings. And we look like six foot praying mantises to those humans that we have revealed ourselves to. For a while, Kathy was going to ET conferences. She had already made our acquaintance through a friend and kept saying, reveal yourselves to me, let me see you. Everybody else at these conferences was seeing ETs. And we said, no, you would turn and run immediately. And because every human we have stepped down into your, you know, 3D, 4D, whatever you're in, um, has done the same. But we've been great friends. And she has turned to us especially at this time, in her interest and in evolution, um, and with the problems she's dealing with, we are excellent at working with technologies. Our bodies, um, our wings, uh, many insects seem almost more mineral than flesh as you know. And our awareness through all the antenna, you know, think of how many insects really don't have antenna. We are very uh, attuned to the electromagnetic natural radiation um, um, of the earth and of the cosmos coming to the earth. We think that your cell phone towers and other antenna are a pretty poor imitation of what the insect kingdom here, for lack of a better word, um, naturally embodies. The broadcasts of the insects, the little noises we make, and even beyond sound, the frequencies that we send out, and we do both broadcast and receive through our antenna, um, through the vibrations, and also more of the resonance. Um, allow certain uh, um, processes within your earth sphere to take place. Our broadcasts do a great deal to transmute the incoming cosmic radiation into a um, form is we're like a transducer we we step things down and change the vibrations so that they are able to be rebroadcast you might say in a form that many plants depend on you think of sunlight as coming in and you know every school child on your 
and your world knows about um, photosynthesis and how necessary sunlight is for plants to grow. And anybody that has kept a plant in the dark knows about that. But it's much more complex than that. What comes in from outer space, what comes up from the center of the earth in terms of resonance, in terms of uh, a different uh, dimensional resonance that is beyond space and time and having to flow over distances. Um, the Your center of your planet is very connected with, and through resonance, with the center of every planet and every star, every conscious being in the universe, in fact. But when we're talking about... Um, incoming frequencies from outer space. The Earth herself has a certain... Um, frequency is one word, but um, embodiment of thought, of purpose, a substance almost, you might say. Substance of meaning that uh, ensouls the earth. Uh, just like every person has the same, and every bug has the same. There's much talk of mass consciousness and of how the internet is kind of a representation of mass consciousness. Usually when humans use that word, they mean a human mass consciousness, not the true mass, 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 big consciousness, that really the earth and all of her creatures embody a mass consciousness there. But even if you just look at human mass consciousness, um and the Internet as a representation of that, according to many people. You're talking about maybe something that is supposedly similar to the instant connection and communication between, say, praying mantises around the globe. That is not uncommon um, among species to have that connection. But when you're talking about insects, you're really getting closer to your idea of broadcast and recept you know, receptivity um, to broadcasts that we think the humans have really copied in many ways from the insect kingdom. But your imitations of what we do are missing the uh, uh, feeling of the ensoulment of your species in the kind of broadcast you do. We see humans very excited about technology and um, the um, proliferation of towers and antenna everywhere in your world, including in little cell phones, which, of course, are broadcast mechanisms. These are working, as far as we can tell, with a certain level of electromagnetic frequency that has a lot more to do with transmitting, uh, with the, you know, like the kind of cosmic ra radiation coming in, microwaves and, and other radiation coming in, then it has to do with what we're talking about when we talk about resonance like you have of the earth that is a frequency, is, is an energy, but it doesn't go out in a wavelengths in 3D like even microwaves. You know, those are still 3D, even though you can't see them, um, in their form anyway, in the form that you generally think of them. Now, um, yes, they do have multidimensional aspects to them as well. But when you're talking about the resonance of the earth, 
This is a different level that does not require the transmission over space and time of frequency. It is a higher dimensional energetic signature. And it is this resonance uh, quality that your internet and many of the broadcasts um, of various kinds are missing. In other words, um, when the cosmic radiation comes in and the insects transmute it to be usable, to be nurturing uh, by the plant king, you know, many species of plants, not all of them, and even many species of other creatures like yourself. So, um, there is an enhancement of the uh, soul level. Um, and we are, we are kind of in the interface. And, and there are plants that do likewise, like um, wild onion does. But we, we're very much involved with a balance of frequency here. We are very much in group mind. Now, I am um, obviously of a species that um, um, when you when you talk about ETs, extraterrestrials, uh, we have presented ourselves as such. And if you you know, people who have studied a lot of ET races will often talk about the, the, the praying mantises. And uh, it's some, some very lovingly and some <laughs> not so lovingly talking about us. We are of quite a different consciousness than yours. And we're known, actually, and Kathy uh, has experienced this many times with us, for being a, very attuned to your nervous system level. Uh, and again, you know, that's the transmission of frequency of impulses through your nervous system. We have many times helped Kathy. Um, if her nerves are frayed to heal, to straighten out, to calm down. And uh, she, she's very grateful to us for this level. We're working now more with her in trying to understand... Uh, some of the kinds of uh, control mechanisms that are being inserted in people, um, like little silica chips that aren't really 3D, and trying to understand, really on an even a higher level than 3D, how this technology of uh, the digital age, of what you blast out of your antenna, uh, what effect that has on, on people, on the human body, but also on the human spirit, and most of all on the whole soul of the earth in her entirety. Now, as I'm saying, this has been our function uh, from our creation to balance the incoming frequencies of cosmic radiation and um, make them pertinent <laughs> to uh, and in harmony with uh, the, the resonance of the earth and all of her creatures. Now we um, are dealing, of course, with frequencies that have some of which have really never been known before on this planet, at least on the parallel world you all are in, probably, uh, that are created by humans. And created, again, um, in rather poor imitation of what naturally is here on the Earth. There have been, um, you know, 
zillions of studies of the health effects of microwave radiation. Notice what comes out of your cell phones. And your uh, many of your transmissions are microwaves. Um, and the health effects of that on the human body. And uh, these studies... Um, we don't know if it's technically zillions, but, you know, thousands of studies, at least, in your world, by your scientists. They're missing a lot of the point. We are wanting to contribute to your knowledge of the effects of these human-made um, technologies. But we come from such a different viewpoint of what matter is, of what the earth is, of what creatures are, of what insects are, of what humans are, what bodies are, that we have really not spoken much publicly on this subject before. We were very excited. Um, Kim did a video um, on... Um, the astral level of electronic internet radiation or of uh, surveillance um, that you can find, and without wow, there's there's a vocabulary there that we can use. Since we, as a species, and again, um, I'm speaking both as the extraterrestrial. Sp species were we've been called 5d 5d i don't really like talking about dimensions that much in terms of specific labels because it doesn't mean much to us but anyway we can step down physically but we generally are not physical in your world but we are of like resonance with our brothers and sisters the little bugs on your planet We feel that um, there's a great call now. Uh, we hear, you know, the dissonance of, of um, and distress of our brothers and sisters, uh, the the little bugs on your planet. Uh, but we also feel very keenly the distress of the humans who are living in a world where the humans, as far as we can tell, are taught to see bugs as pests rather than seeing bugs as a very necessary, beautiful part of who you are, as part of the whole resonance of the whole earth and all the parts of the earth that um, play their part. Uh, the different kingdoms, the different species, the different souls. Uh, it, it seems as though you have a war on bugs. Maybe not the uh, silkworms, you know, or uh, the species you can somehow use, the bees. Although they are dying in droves, as you know. But uh, as we've looked at this... Um, we see that the the human uh, propensity to see a soul as something that one person has, an individuated person has one soul. This is not how we see life. And the term group soul has been uh, put out there for describing us. So we, uh, by us, I mean we look for vocabulary, and. We hear Kathy kind of um, tossing that term around sometimes. She herself is moving into more and more experiments with sharing a soul with other people. Um, she's a double walk-in, and uh, she's taking it farther than that recently. Um... 
And in a, a group soul situation, there's a natural feel that a lot is happening. Oh, and part of why this is so important is we really feel that as the earth rises in vibration, which it is doing, um, or rising dimensionally, that everyone's soul family will become much more important to them in their conscious awareness and in the way they live their life than has ever been the case um, since at least since your technological era has, uh, began. But it will even look different than the ancient peoples um, experienced it. And now they were very close to their clan and had, uh, I would guess that um, most Aboriginal people have much more of a sense of the tribe as being who they see themselves to be as much as they see their individual selfhood as being. But as we're moving up and out vibrationally, the oversoul level, the level of who you are, um, and uh, the oversoul uh, we would define as the part of you on a higher dimensional level that sends out many lifetimes into many different eras that you may call past and future lives or simultaneous lives. Uh, like in Kathy's case, the man behind the camera there, Peter, and she <clears throat> share an oversoul. They're, they're both part of the same oversoul. And so she, if she puts her awareness in the oversoul level, then she and, and Peter are two expressions of her, <clears throat> of who she is as, as a soul family, part of a soul family. The soul family level is becoming really crucial um, as, uh, as, as this uh, human consciousness is becoming uh, awakening multidimensionally. Because if your soul family has a certain purpose and you were created to help fulfill that purpose of your soul family, you are going to have to be working in tandem with other soul family members and, you know, probably thousands, at least, of them. And uh, they have to, you, you have to be able to do your part without necessarily knowing what the others are doing. Ant colonies are a beautiful example of that. How they all know exactly where to go and what their function is to do, um, even though they're down there at eye level, you know, uh, close to the ground, they're not usually up on the mountain looking down to see what the rest of the colony is doing. But they all know the way back to the the home, and they very much work in tandem with the other ants in their colony. This is uh, the way it needs to be now, among the humans as well. That you may not know why you're working a particular job or why you're associating with certain people who may or may not be soul family members. But if you follow your inner guidance and instinct, you will be in the right place at the right time and uh, it will fulfilling the oversoul's purpose. This mythology of the individual self um, being the important unit um, in consciousness, we think is going to be rapidly falling. Uh, it's too lonely, <laughs> for one thing, and we think a lot of people think of the internet as being kind of a representation of group mind of what what you're moving into, where you can um, feel like you, you might feel like you can reach into the mind of many other humans, um, and you know send mass emails at once, broadcasts. We feel like we are experts on group mind, um, since that is our basic function. And actually, even as Kathy was tuning in to us before she started speaking, you know, it, it's uh, it's quite an experience for her, we think, to even just sense um, kind of a vast likeness um, that is both one big group soul of praying mantis and yet very has so many individuals in it. But those individuals don't really see themselves primarily as individuals. 
they see themselves primarily as part of a group. What we see happening on Earth in your technology is moving into, uh, the humans are moving into an experience of the interconnectedness of group mind, of the instant knowing what's happening, um, even if someone is at a great distance from you, if you're on the cell phone with them, um, more of a sense of um, you being a statistic in the advertiser's um, database <laughs> of, of, you know, how they're going to reach you and, and affect you. Um, a statistics about everything exists and that which make you just um, one of many of a certain type. So some aspects of group mind are happening with your broadcasts, but there are some really crucial things missing in terms of experiencing the human group mind as being essentially a part of the soul of the earth. And how we do our broadcasts and receive our broadcasts, and how you do them are worlds apart. We are being brought in by not only Kathy, but other humans as experts on broadcasting. And uh, she feels like we have been enormously helpful to her um, in that area. We find ourselves at a very strange juncture now in our relationship with humans. We are everywhere on your planet, as you know. Um, I mean, insects in general. Um, we we have lived with humans and loved humans and been loved by humans for millennia, at least. And at this time in your history, the uh, pesticides are amazing. And the attitudes towards the insect kingdom are really bordering on what I would call evil in intent. And we are uh, amazed and bewildered at why the humans seem to be picking on us. Uh, the humans uh, upset the balance of living things, um, planting uh, all the same crops that need, a, you know, rather than like a meadow environment where you have many different kinds of plants that strengthen each other in various ways. Um, and then, then when things are out of balance and the bugs move in to try to balance things. Or because things are so out of balance, we've lost our habitat or uh, various reasons. Um, we are exterminated in ways that are extremely actually damaging to not only bugs, but soil and humans and all other creatures. We are at the point now where our very ensoulment of who we were created to, to be and what our function is as part of the whole of this earth is now in, in a great danger. The mutations uh, that have come from these chemicals are very scary. But even more scary is the lack of relationship between the humans and the bugs. The lack of love. 
Well, we experience this lack of love perhaps differently than the trees and the so-called weeds <laughs> do. We are very used to experiencing ourselves on a group mind level. This group mind relates to other group minds. And yes, the humans do have a group mind called mass consciousness by many people. When we approach you, Oh, well, okay, if we would talk about ourselves as being part of the same oversoul of the earth, we have evolved in tandem with you. You do have the idea of evolution, but you're missing the point. I think many of your scientists miss the point that everything evolves together and in balance with each other and uh, preferably in love with each other um, as part of the same wholeness. We do not really want to, and, and I don't think we could, exist on this planet now without humans here. Our relationship goes far beyond, um, you know, mosquitoes needing human blood or something like that. We perform many balancing, enriching functions for each other. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I can't even find the vocabulary for it. Um, of how we just are a part of you and you are a part of us. And I, I know your scientists like to isolate out, uh, you know, how, how does a, a bee buzzing around you affect your nervous system or something, you know, and can we scientifically measure that or, yeah, that's, that's missing, I think, the bigger picture. And the bigger picture, well, part, part of the bigger picture is, like I said, um, our transmuting the cosmic frequencies into, um, you know, stepping them down and re retransmitting them in a form that uh, is very useful to your body. Kathy has actually often felt how um, Sometimes she'll she'll go out in nature, and if she's been at a shopping mall to, or something, and her her nerves are just frayed, she'll go out in nature and she'll sit there, and she can't get her nervous system to work, to to channel. If she's trying to channel uh, a flower or something, and a um, a fly will come, and buzz around her, buzz around her, buzz around her, and she's learning to say thank you. And the vibration breaks up a lot of the knots in her aura. And pretty soon she's feeling smoother, smoothed out, and is able to tune into the earth then. Uh, she's come back to that wholeness, that sense of resonance that bugs and humans have together. Um... Uh, I I promised Kathy this would be short, and and uh, and when I say I, I'm kind of saying I and we at the same time, um, and I, I feel like I'm speaking too long, um, and I, I am a little freaked out <laughs> at the the lights and the camera and the the mic here and the wires, and I'm losing my ability to. Uh, resonate like I need to, to resonate to be able to reach Kathy and, and have her be in a good enough resonation with all this human-made electric, electrical equipment around to, to speak very eloquently, I'm afraid. Um, when we're outside and she's got her little uh, 
digital recorder. That's nothing like this. Um, so I feel, <laughs> I actually kind of feel with all this equipment, like I'm a little bug about to be swatted if I'm not careful, you know, instead of that, that beautiful little bug on the plant that, uh, that she's talking to or something. So I, I think I will uh, end with just a, a trying to um, transmit to you through this camera and through all whatever mechanism you receive the signal um, around the world. I am uh, going to try to give you an experience of our frequency and I hope you will take it in and experience it fully Thank you so much for your attention. Um, with love, we send you love.